The first thing we did was we sat down together and we actually came up with a plan. There was four or five of us involved in that, three senior leadership, and I also pulled out a couple of teachers as well. Because I wanted to make sure that the plan wasn't just what the management thought was important. I wanted to make sure that there were teachers involved in the process so that we could actually identify what the needs of the students were and make sure that was put into the plan. So we looked at where we wanted to be in five or ten years. And a lot of it was just like big goal dreaming, you know, this is what we'd like to achieve in, in this amount of time. And then from there we actually worked backwards and got it right down to a three year plan, what we're wanting to achieve over the next three years, and we identified five main areas. Once we'd identified what the five main goals were, we broke those right down and within each goal we had to identify how we were going to address the needs and what we were going to do to make sure we got to the big end result. So initially we focused on data analysis actually because Aero also identified that we had some inconsistency in our data. So we looked at the data, we broke that down, we actually did that across the school so that the teachers could actually understand the breakdown of what it actually looked like on a large scale rather than just in their classrooms. And once we'd identified where the specific needs were, we started working on that, especially in writing. We had to identify what we had, what we didn't have, so we needed to do a lot of foundation building so that we had good systems and processes in which to gather the information but also evaluate what information we had and what was the quality of it and how were we going to use that to drive the improvement theory within the school. We started with EASTL. We'd actually already been using EASTL in the school but it hadn't been used as effectively as what it had been previously. So we reintroduced that and made sure that the teachers were trained to moderate using the EASTL tool. Once we gathered the EASTL data and had done some analysis of that, it provides a really good starting point for teachers in terms of what are the things that I need to find, what are the things my students don't have, what are the things that this EASTL test is showing that they don't have. I found the analysis of the data, looking at it, being able to identify specific areas to focus on, very helpful in my own practice. So it's changed the way I've looked at the way I teach writing, the way I show children the types of modelling I'm doing, the exemplars that I use, a lot more thought goes into that and a lot more narrowing down the focus, less is more, because especially a struggling writer it's easy to look at it and say, this child needs all this done for them and it's too big. So narrowing it down, breaking down those learning intentions to something achievable both for me as a teacher and for the child as a student has made it far easier to focus my teaching in a more explicit way. From there we've also done quite a lot of other work in writing like we've um, we started with creating learner profiles for our target students. Each teacher had to identify five students who were below in writing and who needed quite a lot of support. And we created learner profiles for those students. And then from there, we also have been monitoring those students. So we've had regular monitoring meetings every Monday to guide and make sure that those students are actually progressing. Part of this process is that the teachers have become a lot more aware about what they're doing. Through the initial practice analysis conversations, teachers really saw things that they weren't sure that they, oh I didn't realise that I did that. And what they're doing is they're making changes and they're actually regularly going back and videoing themselves just for 10 minutes just to see are they being explicit. You're planning your lesson and then you go back and you're reflecting on that lesson and it's like, I didn't actually quite do that or, you know, it didn't quite go the way I planned it and as a result of these conversations I am a lot more aware of, you know, if this is what I say I'm doing in my lesson, am I actually doing this in my lesson? My learning intentions have become a lot more specific. I'm making sure my students are more aware of what their learning intention is as well as the success criteria. We've just filmed ourselves again last week and analysing that video. I did see an improvement in, in my teaching and, and being more specific in what it was I was actually doing with my students. What we've noticed for the students is that they have a lot more awareness about what they're learning um, and why they might be doing it, how it fits into the bigger picture. They're able to talk more about their role in their learning than they have, you know, they could do a year ago back in 2016.
Nikki was really good to work with um, as our external facilitator because she was really honest and the key thing is she was able to build relationships in our school and that was really important because I needed to know that the teachers weren't going to feel like they were being judged. I wanted to make sure that they could work with somebody that had that constructive feedback but was also somebody that they felt they could use as a guide or a support, that they weren't actually being assessed on who they were as teachers. It was more about trying to get their teaching practice improved so that we could accelerate the, the achievement of our students.